Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. I'm Dave Ackley. This is the 20th T Tuesday Update. Let's get into it. Ten weeks ago, I set a goal of having a grid of these tiles, these incremental computing elements that you can plug in with copies of itself. Uh, to have 133 of them manufactured and running by today. Failed big time at that. Did get a lot of progress done. What I want to do today, rather than setting another, you know, five-year plan, ten-week plan, uh, mostly I just want to talk about what happened last week because that's actually, you know, that's sort of what's real. Uh, but there is stuff about the next couple of weeks coming up, so I'll talk about that as well. So, okay. So, um we had a bunch of, we had most of the parts were in, the parts that were missing were these through hole parts, the things that connect one thing to another. Uh, um, and we, last week, uh, found this company for Yukon, for Yukon, for you connector.com via Adafruit, uh, that had from their data sheet that was there. Uh, but they were in spring festival there. Uh, that's done in, in China at this point. So they're back. I started getting in touch with them. Uh, um, I tried to price up an order for the intertile connectors that we need 1200 of them. If we're saying a max build of 200, which is probably going to be more than we're actually going to do. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we need 1,200 of these, six times two, 600 times six times 200, plus the uh, the two main P8 and P9 connectors that we actually connect the Beagle Bones to the board with. Uh, need about 600 of those. I'm sorry, need about 400 of those. Buying a thousand because that's the minimum order quantity. Sent a mail to them saying, "Is there any way that we could reduce this minimum order quantity of five thousand for the inner tile connectors down to something more like twelve hundred that I actually need?" So I, I proposed to buy uh, two thousand of them and, and said, "You know, is there any way that we could do that with a higher price or something?" And I sent it off. I didn't even wait for an answer. I, I went on and started buying other stuff. Uh, need to get. Uh, like 800 of the socket cap screws to screw the cases onto the boards. Found a guy on AliExpress, sent him a mail. His web page said, if you wanted a large quantity, get in touch. We'll get you some kind of discount. So I got in touch. I'm wondering if you could offer some kind of quantity discount for 10 plus units. Again, actually, I want something like 16 plus units, but I was trying to leave a little room to negotiate. Uh, uh, this guy has not answered at all. This sort of aggravates me a little bit, but we'll see about what happens going forward. Uh, uh, other guys getting these spacers to connect the beagle bones to the to uh, to the circuit board, and perhaps to connect the circuit boards, the entire tiles to the back plane, the acrylic thing that's going to mount them for handling. I'm not sure. Uh, Found a pretty good price, and this guy's DHL was pretty cheap, so I didn't even negotiate. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, uh, delivery time five to five days is a little bit scary, but, you know. Uh, so I put in the order. Uh, I decided, oh, yeah, I better leave a little happy, friendly message for Happy New Year's on it and so forth. And this one has actually already shipped. Uh, these are, you know, I ordered a 1,000 of the screws, the matching screws, to go with these things. There'll be uh, at least four on a board to hold the uh, standoffs for the big bone green there might be eight on a board if they're if depending on how we actually mount these things onto the back next backstop uh that we're going to go for it 10 lots of 100 each that's a thousand of uh, a thousand of these things they were only uh 30 dollars 39 dollars delivered uh, um you know, which is really pretty cheap, but then it's just a tiny little nut. I actually, I went to Alibaba.com, which is the place for the actual dealing with wholesalers where you're always dealing straight with the factory. And, you know, these things, the same part, the DIN Ford 934 stainless uh, steel nut of the M3 size, blah, 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 like that. You know, you pay $700 on Alibaba.com, but you get a metric ton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they really crank these things out. Uh, so that is also in flight. That has uh, officially shipped, uh, as according to a message a couple of days ago, although the tracking number is not working yet. That's one of the little tricks that they do. 
even when you pay for uh, you know FedEx IE or DHL or whatever it is, uh, they claim to give you a number, but then the number doesn't resolve through DHL or FedEx for like days. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I got mail back from uh, the uh, for Yukon people saying many thanks. It was very nice. And so the problem is, is the reason it's a 5K minimum order quantity is because it's a special order because it's gray. If I would take black, which had a different part number than the minimum quantity, it was a thousand, which is much closer to what I needed. Now the problem is I couldn't find black. I didn't actually want gray, so I answered. Thanks for the response. Uh, it looks better for me. I've been I can't, but I can't actually find the point that you're linking to me on the website. Uh, uh, of course. I had to edit it and put in little apologies and whatnot. I don't know. I hate doing this stuff. I don't feel like I'm good at it, but I'm getting a little bit more practice at it. This is that whole outside the comfort zone thing. Sent it off, and in fact, I think they, their database was messed up, and, they, and somebody actually went and fixed it. So this only took, uh, uh, I think this was same day, uh, uh, that the answer came back that they got it fixed. So that was pretty good. Uh, um, and so I, I found, I put together an order using uh, the new number that they gave me for black uh, of the inner tile connectors, which is more what I wanted anyway, uh, plus the 2 by 23 headers, that's for the BeagleBone Greens, plus 2 by 13 headers, that's to connect the display to the board. Uh, um, and then the only remaining question was this lead time, 7 to 28 working days. 28 working days? It's like seven weeks? Uh, um, yeah, and, well, not quite that bad. Six weeks. Uh, um, and so on. So, but, you know, I figured, you know, they, 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 there's a factory. They have billions of these things lying around. They just have to kind of scoop them out and weigh them and send them to me. So I wanted to double check, uh, um, you know, are, is everything in stock? Is it really going to take 28 days and so on? Uh, um, and uh, I got the answer back. No, these items are produced by order. We do not have stock. So three to four time, three to four weeks approximately, starting from when I confirmed the order. <sighs> so these parts are not in flight. I haven't pulled the trigger on these things. But my feeling is, is you know, it's time to relax a little bit. Uh, I've worked pretty hard to get an awful lot of parts in, and in particular to get uh, secure the parts that look like they were going to go out of stock for, you know, tens and twenty week periods, lead times. Uh, um, and so if this is three to four weeks, I'm going to be doing other stuff for the next three weeks anyway. Uh, um, if I do this kind of thing, then, you know, I don't also this, I don't need to pay for the super rush shipping. So as long as we can be making progress and actually getting things coming, getting things moving, it would be more cost effective to not rush quite as much. It's just, you know, I've been working on this for a long time. I want to see this thing running. The hardware is just a stepping stone to get to the architecture level, to get to the software level, to get to the living computation, which is really the goal for me. But made a lot of progress. Need to relax. All right. The funny thing was, was that, uh, um, so uh, she suggested that, you know, please order 21553 instead of 16188. You know, so what the deal is that? Uh, um, so this was 16188. Uh, this was the, the other one, you know, and what the heck is the difference? Uh, um, I, I spent quite a bit of time uh, uh, looking through these things, trying to figure out what the difference is. Uh, basically, the difference is the tolerance has got a little bit worse. Uh, uh, this is, you know, two times 2.54, 2.54 millimeters is a tenth of an inch. You see that everywhere. Plus or minus 0.4. That's the original one. And where is it here? Uh, uh, there it is. Uh, uh, 2.54 plus 0.45 and so on. So as far as I can tell, the, the new version that I'm being encouraged to order, which I suspect is the only thing they've got, uh, everything in terms of the electrical properties is all exactly the same. They just give themselves a little bit more mechanical slop. Okay, I'm all right with that. Uh, um, and uh, all right, so that's where we were again. And so bottom line, 
here's what the uh, parts look like right now. Uh, everything in green in uh, in row H here in green is whether we have enough stock for the part to build 150 of them. Uh, in row in column I here is whether we have enough stock to build 200 of them. And essentially, we've got enough stock to build 200 of everything. Uh, except we need more beagle greens and displays if we want to do 200. But we could do that after we get the order because uh, the ETS guys assembling the board are not going to be plugging the, the beagle bones into it directly. We're going to be doing that. So the real thing, again, it's the through-hole parts. J1 to 6, those are the uh, intertile connectors going around the outside, P8 and P9 and so forth. Uh, um, very little of this was green 10 weeks ago. This is progress. All right. Uh, um, so let's talk about 3D printing. Talked about 3D printing a bunch last week. There's been a bunch of follow-ups. So this is what things were looking like before. Uh, last time we had the two legs, the two buttons in the middle, plus the case around it, and we had had that one failure. Whoops. Always. Uh, uh, the one failure where one of the buttons uh, came loose from the bed and ended up, you know, I don't know, flopping around. I really don't know how it managed to get this kind of hairdo. Uh, um, so, uh, again, last week I uh, designed a brim, an extra little thing to give uh, more surface area on the, uh, on the build plate to help it stick down. Uh, and that worked pretty good, but then you had to kind of nip off the, the little ring off of each thing, which wasn't hard to do, but it was an extra step, and I ended up having all of these little nipped off rings lying around my 3D printer. Uh, um, Andrew Walpole suggested uh, that you know there was, you could do a raft or you could do these other things and so forth, which led me to think about you know well you know if really the only goal is to have a bigger footprint on the build plate to let it stick down better, then why have something that has to be removed at all? Couldn't we make this thing just have be a little bit bigger? The, the radius of it can't get much bigger because the buttonhole is near the edge of the case, and if the diameter of the little pusher foot got much bigger it would hit the case but it could be asymmetric uh, um, so I uh, so right and here's a picture of it uh, printing out with the brim so I designed these things that I called duck legs uh, that are still the same diameter on one side uh, but they extend a bit away to get more uh, land more area on the build plate and this solves an additional problem for me which is now that they're asymmetric uh, the position of it's easy to tell where the little bump is that's going to go into the bu push button shaft hole which used to be a small pain point because it was black you know plastic going in a black hole and so on and the and the thing that you were holding on to was the that uh, pusher at the bottom and it was completely symmetric so you'd be spinning it around trying to figure out which one what angle to get it to go in so that they would mate properly now making it asymmetric because it didn't need to be symmetric you just grab it and you know bam it's going to go in so that's nice uh, uh, like that and let's see uh, uh, so here's another angle uh, uh, a couple of pairs of duck legs uh, uh, and here they are uh, mounted uh, on the board, so they're right angles to the uh, the locking shaft, and the locking shafts are both pointing in the same direction, so that one of them points along the side of the case, the other one points into the case. That ends up working out right, given the other material. Uh, so here is the one. So it's a little hard to see. This is the, the, the there's the duck foot there that's pointing along the case. It could not actually point into the case because it would smash into this giant capacitor, which I built in there, which is probably way bigger than it needs to be, and so on. Uh, um, here's the other one uh, that is pointing into the case because there's plenty of room there, and so on. Now, I was a little bit worried that, uh, in particular, that this guy, you know, he's, he's, his duck foot is running right along the edge of the case and I was afraid that when you were assembling it and the button could drop down a little lower it might get rotated and latch under the corner of the case and make it inconvenient to set it down uh, um, uh, and so eventually I said well okay but I could narrow it down so that even if it rotates a little bit it won't go out far enough to catch on the edge of the case so now these aren't duck feet these are more like you know Pinocchio legs or something 
like that, uh, some kind of industrial accident uh, um, like that. But these actually are working pretty good. I've printed up a few of these. Uh, they assemble easily and so forth. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, um, now, last week also, we were working on the the holes for the glow rods, that are the, the light-emitting diodes go at the bottom for the power supply, showing the red for the grid power supply and green for this individual tiles power supply. And I was having trouble getting the hole to be uniform enough so that it wouldn't be either too tight or too loose. Now, Andrew Walpole pointed me at a... Uh, um, uh oh, what's going on? Oh, wrong button. Uh, pointed me at a video uh, by Maker's Muse. It's a great uh, uh, YouTube channel that does lots of uh, does does three D printing stuff. You know, better three D printed holes CAD for newbies. Mm, uh, like that. And the one I liked was this third example that he showed, where you know you sort of just cut this little relief arc uh, so that when you jam in the hole through, you can make it a little bit tight, and then those these little veins here can give a little bit to compensate for any variation. So I tried to do one of those, uh, uh, and I made a little blank to try it on, and you know it seemed possible, although it was really uh, super tight. So I had to start scaling it up. Uh, um, here's a, where I was testing a, r a range of percentages over the one eighth of an inch uh, uh, to get it to work, uh, um, and eventually it turned out to be uh, plus seven. Yes, it's the seven percent solution uh, to make the hole seven percent bigger <laughs> than the thing, just because of the nature of how it works. And I was these are all seven percent holes. They're just oriented differently with respect to the uh, the first layer printing and so on. And these are working pretty well. Uh, um, there's what it looks like in the first layer uh, getting put down. Uh, here it is, has built up a little ways and so forth. Now, you know, sometimes it, it, it crud gets in the middle and it gets into trouble, but mostly it's really not bad. Uh, uh, so here's an example where some crud got into the middle. I ended up reaming it out with a Torx bit and then it actually it worked okay. Uh, but, you know, it's always something. Um, and here's an example of it uh, in use. It's sort of the, the happy Cyclops uh, uh, glow rod holder. Not bad. Got to hurry up, almost out of time. But uh, started having some first layer failures, which is if you've done any 3D printing, you know my pain. Uh, I, you know, it's probably I didn't clean the build plate well enough, although I've gotten pretty religious about that. Uh, so, you know, I had to, it was a, it was a disaster. Uh, um, but so I Google about it and you read about these things. And one of the things to do is to raise the temperature of the extruder so that the plastic is a little more liquidy, raise the temperature of the bed. So it's all a little sticky just for the first layer. I raised it up five degrees to 220 degrees centigrade and 65 degrees for the bed. And that's working pretty well. Uh, um, so far, I haven't had a failure. Uh, this as it's laying down uh, in the new one. Uh, at least I haven't had a failure on the first layer. Oh, just one thing after another. I'm sorry. I, I'm sure this this gets boring, but this is actually what happens. Uh, uh, finally, was getting to the end of the first rule roll, the first spool of prusament. Now, this i3 Mark III printer, one of its big features is it has a filament sensor, so it can tell when it's out and stop. So, all right. So we're, we're going to see it happening. It popped loose from the thing when it came in. It gradually slurped it up. Uh, um, and then it detected that and then went into filament changing mode. I pressed the knob to unload the filament. I did. Okay. Please pull out the filament immediately. Uh, <clears throat> there is no filament to pull out. It, it's gone in already. So I had to kind of skip that step and but I went ahead and I put the, the next one in and, and it did try to suck it in a little bit. Uh, um, and it did squeeze out a little bit at the bottom, but it did not squeeze out as much. When you change filament normally, you get uh, a whole little pile of squeeze out stuff. That is not enough. Long and short of it is, my extruder is completely clogged at this point. I can't print anything at the moment. <sighs> Uh, uh, you know, try these things, whatever. I will spare you the details. We'll find out. Uh, I'm dreading trying to get this thing cleared. And this is all because, you know, I didn't buy it from a kit. I didn't learn all the guts. I tried to cheat, try to get it assembled. All right, so that's that. Now, bottom line, 
The next goal uh, uh, is the Artificial Life Conference. Uh, the abstracts, the papers are due Friday, March 8th. That's about three weeks from today. That's going to be the focus of attention. I'm going to have the parts discussions and the ordering and the stuff in flight hopefully happening in the background, but I'm not going to be working on the hardware, not going to be working on the software, except insofar as it serves the needs of the paper, and that's what it's going to be. And uh, I... In the words of my good friend, Melanie Mitchell, who has this on the door, the fundamental question is, why aren't you writing? And I can use your help if in the next several weeks, the next three weeks, if you see me on the Internet, on social media, please say, hi, Dave, why aren't you writing? I'll be back somehow to have a brief update next week. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching.